Hi, I'm Shane. Welcome to my shop. Welcome to my channel. Uh, thanks for viewing. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, today I have a uh, hydraulic cylinder. A little bit of a rust job, so I started on already. Uh, but the threads got messed up and the, the retaining nut for the piston got messed up, so I need to uh, repair the threads, chase them, take a couple off, clean it up, and make a new nut for the uh, piston. So figured I'd uh, record a little bit, let you join in, see the process, see how I do it, see how I come up with my numbers, and uh, maybe it'll help you out. If nothing else, it'll be something cool to watch on a nice Sunday afternoon. So hang tight, I'll take you over to the lathe, show you what I got going on. All right, so like I said, I already started on, uh, well, I actually finished the rod part. Uh, first couple threads were mangled because that happened. <laughs> That's the nut that I need to uh, remake, duplicate. That holds the piston on your hydraulic rod. Uh, first couple threads were gone. We just took them off, cleaned it up, chamfered the edge. And then I set up with a thread cutting insert and just ran my carriage back actually it's a 51 inch rod and it's it's every bit of with a chuck on this lathe what i can fit on this lathe i'm actually overhanging my bed a little bit with my tailstock <clears throat> but basically just ran my tool all the way over and uh set up for my 12 threads per inch and uh, uh in mesh uh, engage the half nut brought it back kind of over top of the threads and I set my center with the compound that's why it's on an angle uh, it's a usual 29 and a half degree angle uh, just by adjusting my compound and my cross slide I engage fully in one of the threads uh, as close as you can get with your eyeballs and then uh, just started trimming them up I also set my zeros for the, the fully engaged depth and, uh, you know, so I could slide the compound back and pull right back in and know when I was approaching the full depth. Uh, but that about worked. Worked pretty good, actually. Still a little bit of superficial marring and stuff, but I mean, threads and all are in pretty good shape. A little bit. A little bit of junk in there I want to clean out yet, but yeah, there's one thread that's messing on the back side here. Disengage it all. <clears throat> Where are you at? Right there. See that guy's missing there, but uh thread tool went right through it, cleaned it up. And I got every confidence that uh with these six teeth already or threads already engaged. It's going to roll right over that. Like I said, the, the threading tool did, and I'm making the nuts, so uh, should slide right on. Should be a nice smooth fit. Yeah, like I said, it's a rush job. It's got to get it done by probably tomorrow morning is what I'm shooting for. And it's probably nah, 7 30, 8 o'clock Saturday night. And so the next step, I got to. Cut this piece of stock down to about two and three quarters inch on the bandsaw. This is a, a two and a half inch nut. And then uh, I've already figured out what diameter I need to bore this to, to to thread it, have it engaged correctly. I'll show you how I did that then. Uh, after that, I just have to make, uh, you know, your four holes. They're not going to be threaded, but they are going to be 2764s, which is the uh, drill size for a half inch tap in case this needs to happen again. The nut's not part of it. The nut was just welded on you know, to get the thing off. And then last step after threading and making the spanner holes is, see there's two set screws 90 degrees apart. So I'll draw and tap those for set screws and try and get them to land here. 
they're probably going to land in here which isn't a big deal because you, uh, there's going to be nylon bushings slipped in the holes before the set screws go in to protect the threads that's uh i guess a typical way that that's done so i guess i'll take you over to the workbench and uh, show you the couple formulas that i used to figure out uh, you know my hole size for my uh, three inch by 12 or for this it's a hair undersized but uh yeah, I'll show you how I figured that out and how I came to the numbers that I came to and then hopefully I'll get working on the lathe. <clears throat> get the nut done. So I can take it over to the bridge port and you know, do the, the whole work. Alright, stay tuned. I'll bring it back. Alright, so figuring out the size of the, uh, the bore that needs to be bored for the threads. I use this formula here. Uh, in addition to actually measuring the threads and subtracting uh, the thread depth times two off of the major diameter of the, the bolt. Uh, threads are 49 thousandths deep, so you'd have 98 thousandths uh, smaller than your, your major diameter of the the threaded you know the externally threaded end uh, but then using you, you come up really close I, i'll have uh an extra like thousandth uh, side of clearance which is about right which is probably about what you want for it to actually be able to move but uh so i figured on 75 percent uh of full thread and divided that by my 12, which is uh, 6.25. And then multiply 0 0.0130, which is a constant, times that, and you end up with uh, 0 0.08125. And you are gonna subtract that from your, your basic uh, diameter of the thread, which, which would be the three and uh, I think I may have actually used the actual diameter, which is a hair undersized, like I said, 2.8853. And I ended up with 2.904, which uh, it, it parallels with my actual hard measurements really good. So we're gonna shoot for 2.904 and then start threading it. But we got a lot of work to do before that because uh, I gotta make the, uh, the part down to size so hopefully I'll, I'll try and get some quick footage of that just turn it down facing it breaking the edges flipping it in the forge jaw, and uh probably drilling and drilling and drilling some more and then boring and then hopefully threading <laughs> and then hopefully after uh do all the holes thread it onto the shaft perfectly <clears throat> so here's the hoping <laughs> Hang in there, I'll bring it back. I think I've met the capacity of my saw. Uh, it might be time soon to buy a better one. Uh, yeah, that's just some cheap imported saw. I couldn't stand the rickety stand, so I got a nice new one. Stand's probably the only reason I hang on to this saw. Uh, I think I'm about ready to part with it. This will probably be half hour of cutting. I'm pretty sure that was a tooth that just broke off. That's fine. Yeah, I'll bring you back when I get my blank cut. We're getting there. And uh, in other news, I think my previous assessment that I need a new saw. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, I think that may be decent, uh, a good idea. And fair. <laughs> I bet I can't afford a new hide mech. <laughs> well, since I keep cutting, I'll bring it back. Alright, so, uh, last thing you saw, the bandsaw burn up on me. I had to get a little creative. 
cutting it off. But I got her all indicated in. Running pretty true. So the idea is I'm going to face as far as, or uh, turn as far as I can. I'm going to face this down until it's flat because it's, it's definitely cut, not cut straight. And then I'll, uh, I think I'll, I'll uh, just chamfer this edge and face it uh, and flip the piece over and then turn this side. Then I'll work on uh, getting to my final length of the part. Uh, same thing, turn it down, chamfer it, and then start uh, center drilling, drilling, drilling some more, boring out, and getting ready to uh, chase the threads. So let me get to turn and I'll bring you back. All right, here I got the one side turned down, chamfered, uh, getting ready to flip the part. Uh, do the same thing to the other side and then start drilling holes. All right, it's about the best I can do here. Try to set you up so I can see, so you can uh, see indicating it in. I'm going off the uh, machine surface. I'm gonna get concentric with, yeah, uh, with the parts that I've already machined. <clears throat> I start going 180 out. I loosen the lows. Tighten my highs. Trying to get them close. Work on the other side. Tighten a high. Loosen the low. Tighten a high. Got a little carry to their way there. All right, where was that here? And loosen the low. Tighten the high. Tighten the high. Tighten him a little bit. much See, that's pretty close now. Make sure they're all tight. That's pretty good. Chasing my tail a little bit here. So it's within a half a towel. Should be good enough for what we're doing. died about halfway through the park. Uh, bring me back now. This is my final pass boring to my uh, final inside diameter where I cut threads in it. I'll tamper the edges first. And that's where we're at, making progress.
Just a little wiggle, just a little bit of free play. I don't think too much at all. They're doing freaking nice. Just cut and drill the spanner holes in the sets. I'll do that in the super spacer on the bridge board. That'll be that. All right, so it got late last night and I ended up breaking a tap drill on the pilot for this uh, bore and got a little frustrated. <laughs> the phone died. Uh, I think I spent like an hour, hour or so trying to get the, uh, the drill bit out. The drill bit broke inside. Uh, couldn't get it out, so I flipped the part in the lathe and I just snuck in from the other side and was able to drive it out with a punch. Uh, I uh, drilled it to an inch and a quarter because it's the biggest sharp drill bit that I have right now and I didn't really have time to sharpen one so I just ended up uh, using a boring bar and coming out to uh, that diameter that at 2.904 I wound up just a hair over that at uh, 2.906 and then I yeah pretty much just single point threaded the you know 12 threads per inch in this uh, fit it up to the cylinder or the the, the rod the hydraulic rod it seemed to fit good it fits actually really good it's like a perfect fit and uh now I got it set up in the super spacer. I got a four position plate. I have two uh, threes by 16 Allen heads, or uh, holes to tap for like uh, Allen head set screws. They're 90 degrees apart. And then I'll, I'll flip this on its side and uh, indicate it off of the, the uh, column on the mill. And then find my center of this bore step it out halfway and I just got to do uh, four uh, 27 60 fourths uh, holes for a spanner wrench and I'm doing 27 60 fourths so that it can be uh, easily tapped if something would, would need if you'd need to use a puller on it or something uh, yeah so basically right now I'm just running a quarter inch pilot down through and then running a 3 8 bit through and then chamfering it and then I'll, I'll just I'll probably just tap them on the bench so I'll do that I guess and bring it back Finished product, fresh out the pressure or parts washer. Got holes for a spanner, Got holes for set screws. Got threads for the hydraulic rod. So I guess we'll go try it real quick, make sure it's gonna work yet. Excuse the mess, as usual. Doesn't take long to mess a shop up, I guess. Oh yeah, Just going all the way. Ok, 
kind of tough with one hand. Oop. Yep, got her all straightened out now. Just had some burrs for the set screws. Oh, tight against. <laughs> yep, so that's that. Appreciate you tuning in. Appreciate you watching. Uh, if you like what you see, like and subscribe. I got some other stuff uh, in the works here. I got the, uh, this vise here. I may make a video on. It didn't come with a lead screw or, or anything. Just missing the dovetail piece. So set up to machine a new dovetail piece. Uh, like the nut. Put a new lead screw in it. Make the ball uh, for the handle. Might do some cleanup on the jaws with the shaper. I'm not sure yet. Um, I have some brass coming for the metal shaper. I did move a couple of things here. Uh, wanted to make white wipers out of brass. The one was you know broke. There's only half of it there. The other one's in decent shape, so I have something good to copy off of. I figured I'd make out out of brass, make them nice looking, and maybe put them on the pantograph machine. Which became a workbench yesterday when I had to move all of that stuff. I thought maybe I'd engrave Cincinnati on the way wipers or, or something to that regard. Yeah, let me know what you think.